Good afternoon. I decided to do my video post today on homosexuality within the Presbyterian denomination. I've been fascinated by the Presbyterians, uh, the more reading that we've done, uh, so that's why I wanted to do this. Uh, I was fascinated with the development of Princeton, uh, Samuel Davies, Jonathan Edwards, uh, J. Gresham Machen, uh, you know, all these guys, Charles Hodge, Charles Augustus Briggs. There are just so many fascinating things that happen within the development of the Presbyterian denomination. Uh, that I wanted to see how they were handling some of the issues of homosexuality as they developed later in the 20th century. Uh, it was later in the 20th century that the fundamentalists got back into politics. Uh, we saw this with Jerry Falwell developing the moral majority in the late 70s. Uh, that, of course, was for the issue of abortion, abortion. But it was at the same time period that the Presbyterians were having to deal with uh, with issues of sexuality within their denomination. Uh, earlier, they had just dealt with marriage. Um, they redefined some of the things in the Westminster Confession of Faith in order to deal with marriage and divorce. And it was out of that that spawned and transitioned into what I was going to talk about today in the late 70s, dealing with homosexuality. There was a lot of uh, division happening within the Presbyterian denomination. And in 1976, uh, Jack Rogers talks about uh, one of the commissions uh, that was sent out to figure out why is there so much division within the denomination. The findings were rather intriguing. Uh, the findings did not come back and talk about how divisive homosexuality was, but instead it talked about how divisive uh, the issue of inerrancy or how the churches were going to ins uh, interpret scripture. So they found early on uh, that it was the interpretation of scripture that was more divisive and influential in how they're going to deal with homosexuality than anything else. Uh, they broke this down into four camps. Uh, the first one was represented by the old school Princeton's Charles Hodge. Uh, this was predominant from 1812 uh, to 1927, roughly. This stance was that uh, scripture is authoritative and inerrant, uh, reliable. The second moved on and started to become popular in the 30s to the 60s. This was developed by Karl Barth and Bonhoeffer. This was slightly weaker on inerrancy. Uh, instead, they said maybe scripture isn't so inerrant when it comes to historical facts or scientific facts, but the rest of the things that communicates, inerrant, we're good to go. Uh, Progressing beyond that, though, is point C. Uh, this is where things start to change and make a, a shift in this after the 60s. This is the uh, liberation theology. It's an emphasis on justice. Uh, and building on from that is, is uh, view D, uh, which takes uh, the concern for justice and adds to that process theology, emphasizing uh, God's persuasive love. Uh, so as they tried to understand the different churches' uh, views of homosexuality. Uh, they clearly tied that to how they were, uh, or correlated that to how the churches were interpreting scripture. Uh, those that said scripture was inerrant, uh, those that said uh, we need to rely on this infallible word of God from camps A and B, lined up and said uh, we cannot ordain homosexuality within our denominations. Um, uh, that's against the word of God and they stood on that. Uh, those others that took the idea of scripture as being what was inerrant instead of the, the direct message and words themselves, they clung to the idea of justice and love and said we should be able to ordain homosexuals. You know, homosexuals. Uh, this was not passed as a denomination as a whole. It was kind of a church by church thing and this started to progress in, uh, in the late 70s and into the 80s. Uh, Wendy Cage, uh, she also got in on these studies and said that uh, a lot of the division came from the funding. Uh, who was being funded? Uh, those with less funds being uh, issued to teach people uh, were more divisive. So the big question then for me comes from Simona Giordano, uh, who wrote a book, Children with Gender Identity Disorder. Uh, she talks about the 40s uh, being when some of this stuff in psychology developed and went from homosexuality to gender identity. So now the big question in my mind is, as the church has develop, developed, how do we interpret and stand on scripture to deal with homosexuality? 
how are we going to now in our day deal with gender identity? Thanks.